Oh, hi there. <laughs> You're listening to episode 18 of, uh, what was this called? I'm just looking at my notes. Fresh, Fresh Floppies. What's up to all our sidekicks and henchfolk out there in the Geek Nation? You're currently tuning in the Fresh Floppies, which is a show wherein we will discuss certain spoilers. books. No, not a sing- no, no spoilers. Oh. Books that are coming out today at your local comic shop. So, uh, spoiler free, so that you, we won't ruin it. Uh, well, but then you might walk away being like, "Hey, uh, this might be a book I want to pick what up." Makes, in the shop. What makes it flop? Uh, What's a floppy? Well, a floppy is a single issue of an ongoing story. Um, it's not. It's not a pleasant name. Floppy. Yeah. Um, um, uh, here's here. Enjoy our fresh flaxids. <laughs> flaxids. <laughs> oh, um, I. If you hear a ringing, that's the cat wanting to be a part of the podcast. Um, but uh, floppies. Yeah, I wonder that. It's just because it. <laughs> when you when you. Yeah, yeah. Get, you know, like because speculators love that when it's like a key issue, you just yeah, take you it just, by the spine and you, and you shake it, shake it violently like a baby. Yeah, you get, you don't get that that all the value is coming out of the book sound <laughs> yeah. with a hardcover or a trade paperback you just don't get that um also i should i should mention that i said flaxid because once i heard uh what's his name the guy who plays a uh, beast nicholas the holt movies. the other guy the older guy kelsey grammar kelsey grammar was on a was on an interview and apparently flaccid it should be pronounced flaxid and so ever since i pronounced it flaccid um and then I also have to he's <laughs> do ra- that entire story every time he's a, I accidentally. He's say a it. raging conservative. Oh no! I, I hope I hope you understand now that you spread hate. I do. Because you go with flaxid. Sorry. You know what doesn't spread hate? Hmm. This week's comics. What do you got there in front of you? I have a book called The Oddly Pedestrian Life of Christopher Chaos from Dark Horse Comics. It's issue number one. It's um, apparently I thought written by James Tynan. It is, in fact, not. Mm-hmm. It is based on an idea by James Tynan IV. Script by Tate Tromble. Art by Isaac Goodhart. Colors by Miguel Muerto. 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 Spooky name. Uh, letters by Aditya Bidikar. I need you for the remainder of this uh, podcast, also the remainder of our friendship, mm-hmm. to only refer to this book as its full title. The Oddly Pedestrian Life of Christopher Chaos. Number one. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just like last night at book at Movie Club, I constantly called it Tu Wong Fu. Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Yeah, we don't do the dot, dot, dot here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the Christ- dot, 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 Christopher Chaos. No, it's The Oddly Pedestrian Life of Christopher Chaos, number one. What did you think of this issue? Um, it was floppy. It was cute. It was, yeah. Um, it's nothing more than cute. It's, um, it's a, it's a teenage, it's a teenage mad scientist. Mm-hmm. Super smart. Yeah. Um, he deals with things that I deal with, like intrusive thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that, I thought that was kind of cool. They're 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 alluding to his uh, neurodivergency as um, some sort of latent, um, not madness, energy or evil or something power. supernatural. Power. Uh, yeah. It's, is it even supernatural? It's like power. So like yeah. you know when he um, is is peaking, uh, he has to like get it out or there's energy discharges it's um there's something under the surface that's um obviously a wonderful metaphor but Mm. you know there it is um but the book itself was uh, the narrative device was interesting it's essentially him talking to a pigeon relaying the events of the book and then they can circle back around to him at the sidewalk with the pigeon. There was a surprising element in here that I didn't mm-hmm. see coming. Me neither. Which I was like, oh, that's out of nowhere. That's neat. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a different kind of book than I thought it was originally. So I, I like that aspect of it. But, um, I, you know, part of me wishes I didn't know that it was just based on an idea by James Tynan. Because um, I found myself going, what was the idea by James Tynan? Probably the character. Just the character. I was really curious so as this, to what the elevator pitch he may have given for this book was. This premiered on his um, Substack. Oh, yeah? In like... Uh, pieces and now they're printing it through Dark oh, Horse. No, no kidding. So I did wonder, knowing that, I did wonder if it reads a little differently. Like this, I don't know if this is like two issues in one or two chunks. I, I don't even yeah. know how, how it divvies up. What is a sub stack? Um, but um, it didn't feel disjointed. Well, it, actually, answer that question for the people. What is a sub stack? Oh, I didn't know I had to bother. It's a it's a newsletter. It's a it's a yeah, it. newsletter that a lot of comic book uh, creators and artists are. 
part of you can pay to either get some of their wares or uh, special correspondence or sneak peeks on projects that they're on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can read full comic books. They'll send some. you, yeah, comic books. Yeah. I oh, will not send you, but they'll send you links to digital mm-hmm. versions. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was a neat idea. So, um, yeah, I wasn't blown away by this first issue. I think it's just fine. What do you think of the art? Uh, it is inconsistent. Yeah. I think some of it is really, really strong, and I think some of it is less than strong. I think the layouts are great, mm-hmm. but the art is fine. Yeah. Like, there's a couple of, like, really, really good um, panel layouts where, like, you know, it's a character in the foreground full frame and then there's panels behind them like it really does work with kinetic energy really really well Mm -hmm. but the actual art inside that great layout is just you know all right kind of by the numbers yeah it's a little um journeyman Mm -hmm. is that yeah yeah so like i this is a good i think this is fresh enough Mm -hmm. this is a fresh enough hit and because i like tynan yeah for the most part and i like nate brommel Tate Brommel. Oh, okay. I'd never heard that name. Um, Behold Behemoth, he okay. did, which is really good. And he's the co-writer of um, House of Slaughter, which I've never read. I have not read that. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I'm about 22 issues behind on uh, Something is Something Killing, Something's Killing the Children. Children. Same. Yeah. But um, I don't know. There's a lot of talent here mm-hmm. and a lot of interesting pieces. But as, I mean... It didn't blow me away as a first issue. No. Yeah. No, it didn't. Uh, I wonder if a double-sized issue... Well, it was a pretty thick issue, actually. So this is a thick boy. You know what? Um, oh, presentation is wonderful. Oh, yeah. By the way. All the covers are fantastic. It's got a good build. It's a... Uh, even the basic cover, I say that with air quotes, yeah. is a almost cardstock cover, but not really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a thick print. Um, but I, I, I... You know what? To your point, I almost wish this was how... Um, Scott Snyder's doing his digital comics. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that comes out, it was digital first for him. So yeah. like Clear, um, Bar- Barnstormers is coming next. Uh, we Have Demons. Mm-hmm. They were six issue digital books. Yeah. But they're three issue print books yeah. because they've been printing like nice chunky boys. Yeah. yeah so like, yeah, maybe maybe this is a format kind of thing. Like, yeah. If I had more, it was a little more meatier time first issue. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure... I really cared about this main... Like, okay, you see him on the cover. He's got blue hair. He's got a pigeon in his um, his jacket. His jacket's bright yellow. Uh, he's got a pink shirt on. Like, he's in a crowd. He stands <coughs> out. I'm dying. I liked the cover of this book, but this character, I do not find him as intriguing or interesting as I kind of hoped to by mm. looking at the cover. Yeah, it's... um, Yeah, it's a lot of broad strokes. Yeah. I think his his appearance is doing a lot of work for him right now, mm-hmm. and hopefully I'll learn more. Yeah, I'm gonna give this an arc. I think I'm pulled for it. We'll give it like two or three issues to kind of really feel for it. But I'm gonna let you report back to me and tell me <laughs> if I should read issue two. <laughs> what do Fair you got? Fair enough. I am gonna talk about one of your favorite books that's ever been booked. Oh, yeah. It's, I can't know if you're being sarcastic because I do enjoy this book. It's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dawn, <it> hyperbole? <laughs> Dawn of DC, Green Arrow, number three by Joshua Williamson. I almost yes. said Scott Williamson. Joshua Williamson and Sean Isaacsi, who's a, who's a great follow on Twitter, if you don't. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sean's great. Uh, we're best friends. I just call him Sean oh, all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Sean's great. <laughs> he was at my wedding. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I have face blindness with just all white people. <laughs> I don't even know who my family is. Um, so this is the third issue of the aforementioned Green Arrow series. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, uh, issue one and two. Uh, issue one I thought was fun, but thought it was like hella rushed. It just felt like skipping over what seemed like should be good character beats to just get to the main plot of what this miniseries is going to be. So it was like, all right, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it still kind of left me cold. Issue two really kind of, it finalized what the main conceit of this book is, which is essentially the Green Arrow family. There is something happening to where they are not allowed to be together, period. Some some machinations of them never being allowed to be together in this issue, minor spoilers, we learn that members of the Green Arrow family have something on them, implanted in them, that if they are within close proximity, multiple are in close proximity of each other, they get displaced in time. <gasps> Just Ooh, flitted away. Rude. Yeah. So 
my problem with the first issue where it's just like, oh, your daughter that died is 20 now yeah. and you immediately recognized her in a mask. Yeah. Like that was like, ugh. But they go back and explain that, that she was actually displaced in time forever ago, grew up in the past, trained by a cat woman, and now is his adult teenager. Like, huh. they, they go back and they kind of play around with this idea of they just get kicked all over the place. Yeah. And they establish that it happened after his resurrection, mm-hmm. Green Arrow's resurrection yeah, from, yeah. like, way back. Kevin Smith. Yeah. Um, so it's it's interesting. The, the book's got two tracks. It's um, Green Arrow and... Like Oliver and Cyan, his granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Granddaughter? Yeah. Right? Son's son. Or more like uncle. Because, no, granddaughter. Yeah. His granddaughter. Holy shit. Yeah, because Connor Hawk's kid, yeah? No, it's no. Speedy's kid. Oh, well, then, um, yeah. Uncle. Because right? they're not actually related. They're not actually related. Speedy he was like and, a ward, right? Yeah, he's his ward, yeah. Um, but granddad-ish. Sure, yeah. Um, and they get... Sent to the 31st century, mm-hmm. meet up with the Legion, who, and Connor Hawk happens to be there. He's been with the Legion for a couple of months now, um, which is really cool character design and dope. At the same time, you've got um, Roy and Dinah in current continuity time frame trying to figure out what happened, and they come afoul of the Peacekeepers, Peacekeeper and Peace Wrecker. Yeah. Yeah. It's by the numbers, it's fun. Um, I do have an issue with the art. No. Not Sean's art. This whole book is washed out, and oh, I don't the, know why. The colors? Yeah. Oh. Like, I, it seems like bother a... bother me. It, but if you compare it to the last issue, yeah. the last physical issue, yeah. it's so much brighter. Oh, no kidding. And I think it's just like a printing process. <gasps> like, everything... Ju- yeah, there's... Uh, sorry, Damn it, you I spoiled, spoiled the ending myself. for I, looked, I, I flipped too far, and I got a spoiler. You Dang dumb it. son of a bitch. Um, yeah, this is fun superhero y books. So, like, the the big noise of this book was that I think it was extended. It was supposed to be six issues. I think it's been extended to 12. Oh, cool. Um, it's a fun story. It's it's not changing the world. Mm-hmm. But um, I think this is probably the strongest thing that Williamson's writing right now that I'm reading. What was the other one that we're in? Superman. Superman. Yeah. I'm behind on that one. I, I, I don't catch up. I don't know. The, you've read two issues. Yeah. I've read one. Yeah. They're up to five. I. That's around when he usually shifts the bed for me. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hold off. That's how I've been feeling about this Green Arrow run is that it's not changing the world. But um, much like a lot of the DC books right now are just solid. Like, like, like I, and I don't mean solid like it's fine. But I mean like solid. Like yeah, good. Yeah, it's it's solid comic booking. I yeah. So I do think that their DC kind of occupies a space right now where some of their solid comic books are life-changing. Mm-hmm. Like Nightwing is life changing. Yeah, love uh, it. World's finest. So Defi- good. Is, is, I can't wait for World's finest Teen Titans. These are like genre defining books that are happening right now that people will probably talk about in ten years. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got something like this, who's it's outshadowed by those books, but yeah. it's still in the style of that kind of like playful, mm-hmm. old fashioned comics. And yeah, I really yeah. enjoy. Yeah, yeah. same. One hundred percent. One hundred. What are you going to talk about? So this is a book that I ordered for the store just because I like the cover. Uh, it is from Scout Comics. It's called The Quarry. 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 Number one. By Steve. Mike Salisbury, Marvin Luna, Andrea Lorenzo Mil- Milanari, and Marcus Gilroy. Um, to have, a, have a browse. Have a browse to that book. I will thumb it. Uh, it looks like it's all drawn. I mean, I imagine it's digital, but it looks like it's all been drawn with pastels. Great cover. Yeah, the cover is great. Uh, and as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, this is just a slice of life graphic novel about some stuff that happened to people, um, which is is really solid. It's really, really good. Um, and I was like, oh, this is this is normally a graphic novel. You would just pick this up in the indie shelf and just read it like you would Persepolis or Blankets or Goodbye Chunky Rice, um, et cetera. Um, Persepolis, I say that. So um, this would be in the indie section under the graphic novels. And uh, I was like, what an interesting way to do this. You're, you're going to you're gonna break it up into issues? Next issue is not until no. December. Uh, look, and also, also, to be continued in the graphic oh, novel. This is just a tease. Yeah, I don't know if this is a tease or if this is a prequel. Not prequel, like a pre... What's the word I'm looking for? Prelude? Prelude. I don't know if this issue is going to be in the graphic novel. Because that's weird. 
Um, or if it's just like, oh, here is the beginning of the story and then to be continued in a graphic novel. Does this uh, have a relatively fulfilling kind of like... No. It sets up a mystery uh, of what happened uh, in the beginning of the story. So I imagine the whole issue is going to be in there. But I, I can't so. say that for sure. I was going to say, like, this is a cool idea of, like, hey, we're going to give you the first chapter of uh, OGN coming out soon. Um, but if they don't include it, then that's wild. Yeah. 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 So I just thought that was an interesting way to do it. I can't tell if I like it or not, I, that this this particular thing. Like, oh, okay, it's a four ninety nine book mm-hmm. to read the first maybe chapter of a graphic novel. And now you got to go read the graphic novel. I think it depends on the price point on the graphic novel. Mm. But... But well, also, if it's if included in the graphic that, novel. What's that? If it's included in the graphic novel. Right. So, is this, I don't know how I feel about that. Is this but manipulative or uh, maybe, unfair? Like, yeah, hey, this looks like a cool number. Is it Because if it would said one shot, then that's interesting. But yeah. it says number one. Uh-huh. Maybe somebody going through previews was like, this looks interesting. I like the, uh, uh, I'm going to pull it. Yeah. And they get it. And then it's just a prelude or a prologue to... Yeah a graphic novel in December. But it also works because it makes me want to read The Quarry when it comes out in December. It says mm-hmm. the story, That's this is my question, the story continues in the trade paperback. Oh, uh, I mean, I... That could mean either. Yeah. Right? So, um, but anyway, if you like, uh, I would say if you like uh, slice of life indie graphic novel books, uh, stories that you should definitely check out the quarry. I don't know how I feel about that because on one hand too, like it has to be strong enough to get you to order the other one. Yeah. For this to be like, it's paid, it's paid promotion. Right. They're making you pay. This should be a free, promo. This should be a freebie. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Just I mean, hand it hey. to people and be like, Hey, the graphic novel is coming out in December. Let me know if you want to pre-order it. Go for it. Scout. Yeah. Comics. Um, so I kind of want to do a little bit more research on this particular thing because it's I don't I don't know how to feel about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the art and the story this this is all marketing. Yeah, yeah. The, the story itself, the art itself is I'm on board 100. percent I'm definitely going to read the graphic novel when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. And slice of life. Something stuff, I've never seen before. Slice of life stuff is uh, for me it's difficult in single issues. I'd rather have it in like a large chunk. Like mm-hmm. I think the last one that I got in issues was uh, getting it together. By Cine Grace. Yeah, yeah. Um, delightful story, but I would have rather. I, I think at the end, I just like read it in a chunk because yeah. the the nature of like single issue comics is usually just like a, a forward momentum into the next yeah. thing because it's sequential storytelling. It's mm-hmm. like serialized, and when it's just they went to bed, yeah, and that's the end of the issue. Yeah. It, it removes that kind of like. Oh, what tension next? or yeah, yeah it's it's just a different up. experience cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah not saying that i don't like them i just i i, I prefer them in collected edition because you want to meditate on it not mm-hmm. get a quick hit of it right yeah um i should say a little bit about what the book is and uh, it, there is a a cold open where these two teenagers one is sneaking into the other one's place and they're getting ready to go to the quarry together which is a body of water in town and um then it cuts to them at the quarry and the gentleman is taking off his shirt and getting ready to walk into the quarry while everyone there is laughing like, oh, they're having a good time. And it seems like he may be drunk uh, because it's got those little bubble pops around his word balloon <laughs> that <laughs> signifies yeah, you're drunk. Um, and then we cut ahead to the future um, and we're dealing with the kid's little brother. So... You don't know quite what happened in the quarry, but something bad because mm. that big brother is now gone. So yeah, I'm I'm interested by the while history. they were in the quarry. Mm-hmm. Well, we assume. he received he received word oh. of a scholarship opportunity that he'd have to leave immediately. And he just for. Left. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna go. It's a happy ending. That's all that happened in the quarry. I don't know why you're like, catastrophizing. <laughs> <laughs> and I just realized. That we left on the table. Both of us just thought like Christopher Chaos was fresh enough. Uh-huh. Could you say that it was oddly pedestrian? Yeah. Yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> yeah. The oddly pedestrian life of Christopher Chaos. Come on. I, we left that on the table. That's Damn just it. awful. What do you got? You got a comic to talk about? Uh, what I don't have is a pension for puns. Uh, but yes, I do have a comic to talk about. This is Brave, Batman Brave and the Bold, number two. Um, this is an anthology book. We talked about the first issue. I talked about the first issue. Yeah. 
Um, more of the same. More of the same. Great. Um, oh. I'm enjoying this. It oh. is uh, four stories. The last issue was four stories, three that were continued on, and then one short story by a artist writer. Hmm. That would, last issue was Dan Mora. Black and white. This issue, uh, the last story is All Things Considered, story and art by Joelle Jones. Ooh, I also, like Also, black and white. Yeah, so, it's a paradigm. Why are they taking place in the Batman black? I guess there's no more back, Batman black yeah, and yeah, white. There's just, there's just this. Yeah. There's also no more urban legends. But, um... I typically dislike anthologies. We'll just I'll say it yeah. every time. Yeah. Because there's always like one great one and then just like I paid nine ninety nine for four stories that I'll never want to read again. Yeah, yeah. This is not that. Oh, um the nice. first the first story is Batman the Winning Card Part Two with uh Tom King, written by Tom King with art by Mitch Jarrods. Um this is harrowing. Like Whoa. Joker is horrific <laughs> in this book. And They've used this storytelling device where um, you've got like old school. Uh, have you ever seen a silent, silent film where film, they actually yeah. have like the dialogue cards in between scenes? Yeah. All of the Joker's dialogue is in silent film cards, mm-hmm. and they're usually really terrible jokes. Yeah, yeah. And this is a green Batman because this is essentially this is essentially the first his first meeting of the Joker. Right. Because I think the first one had a little bit to do with uh, the man who laughs, which was like the first story of the Joker, right? Does it? Right. It was like he's going to kill certain people by midnight. Yeah. And Batman's trying to stop yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the first Joker story. Um, this was great. Nice. And then the second book, uh, Stormwatch, uh, by Ed Brisson and Jeff Spokes. I love Jeff Spokes. Jeff art. Spokes so good. His art is fantastic. Yeah. I still don't know who half of these characters are, uh-huh. but it's it's essentially just like a Suicide Squad esque team, and they just kind of keep screwing up in fun ways. So I'm enjoying it. And then the last story is um, Superman: The Order of the Black Lamp, Christopher Cantwell, with art mm. by Javier Rodriguez. Huh. Normally, I love both of them. Uh oh. This is just fine. It's okay. kind of weird. Um, it's the conceit is that Superman is on a mission, but it's but the what is it? Clark Kent sends him on that mission to mm-hmm. report back, which I guess they used to do in the old-fashioned comic books where Superman sometimes wrote for or yeah, what? he's taking notes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the entire all of the dialogue, not all the dialogue, but all of the um, text boxes are Superman's notes to Clark Kent about what he saw when he went and investigated I see. something. I see. I see. Yeah. For appearances. So it's, yes. I see. So it's um, interesting. It's, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's kind uh, of me. It's Clark Kent just really lying to everyone. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of in meandering. It's fashion. kind of interesting. It ends in a little cliffhanger that uh, those cliffhangers that don't mean anything where you're like, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah. And then the Joel Jones story is, I mean, it's light on story, but heavy on amazing art. So mm, She's great. Yeah. yeah, this was this. Um, I as somebody who doesn't like anthology books, this is great. How fresh? Uh, it's very fresh. Very fresh. Very fresh. The the I also love the presentation. Yes, the presentation is in quite fresh I'm, as well. It's perfect bound. I love a perfect bound comic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, this is really great. I I mean, I don't love the Simone DiMeo cover, but who cares? Oh, I, I like it. Yeah. I mean, there was like three or four different covers. You you have choices. Yeah, well, you have choices. Oh, well, I'm your face has choices. With, I'm stuck with what I've got. Should I? I think you should. All right. So Steve Niles is the gentleman who wrote 30 Days of Night. That's the thing I always say. Anytime a new Steve Niles thing comes out, they go, oh, it's this. And I tell a customer, oh, remember 30 Days of Night? And at this point, most people are like, no. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say it like. It was big back in the day, <laughs> um, like 20 years ago, 15 years ago. It was a horror story wherein I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe no one's done this before. Because in Alaska, you, you have nighttime. The sun goes away for like a full month. Mm-hmm. So, of course, all the vampires are going to congregate to Alaska and just have a f- frenzy, right? So I thought that was kind of cool. They made a movie out of it. Anyway, both the story, very good. So um, Steve Niles has a new book called Bryn Mawr, B-R-Y-N-M-O-R-E, not to be confused with Bryn Mawr, uh, Philadelphia suburb. Um, and this is from IDW, <laughs> art by Damien Worm. Worm. And uh, art assist by Alicia Zerno and letterer Taylor Esposito. Um, this feels very much like 
what was the TV show that came out about a year or two ago? Um, the Outsider. Mike, Mike, uh, he does horror stuff. Flanagan. Mike Flanagan. Oh, the with the church in the island. I didn't see it, so no spoilers. Midnight Mass. If, thank you. Midnight Mass. This is feels very much. If you like Midnight Mass, mm -hmm. this might be right up your alley. Um, the um, even that character looks like the sheriff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. There's a, a gentleman who um, he comes from the. Um, the people who, the Turners, it's called Turner Island. Mm -hmm. uh, de great, 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 great grandfather founded the island. Something happened in between that and now where the Turners are um, kind of hated. Are they turned so, on? They, oh, they oh, turned oh, on them. And, I need to um, stop with the you're puns. You're on fire today. Uh, puns are awful. I hope you burn. Um, <laughs> so uh, he comes back for the first time in a very long time to this island that has his namesake. And he is not very welcome for a reason that we don't know yet. Um so it's him sort of settling back in, and then at the end, uh, he finds a door mm -hmm. at the old church. He's uh, he's bought a church, or maybe it belonged to his family, and he's going to renovate it and become, it's going to be his house. And while he's doing that, he comes across a door, and that is sort of the lead into the second issue. And it's really solid. I think if you are a fan of Mike Flanagan and that series specifically, um, Midnight Mass, which was amazing, I love that miniseries, this is up your alley. Um, Costa and Alice who probably like this um, however I will say that the art the cartooning is um, it feels strange for the type of story that it is but I think they are overly leaning into the colors which are too 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 dark hmm. it feels like maybe that these colors looked different on the screen and then when it printed printed too dark I'm not 100% sure but there are times where I'm like, my old ass eyes were like, what's happening? This is, very, this is a very dark book. <laughs> Did um, you, uh, what were the conditions uh, you during your reading? I was uh, in bed with the lights off, staring into nothing. So, so you just kind of like, uh, I made it all up. Intimated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this, yeah. this is actually a book about a little girl's birthday party, yeah. and everyone is happy. Yeah. And it does take place in Bryn Mawr, written, written by Steve Niles. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, this is uh, pretty fresh. I would say pretty fresh. If you're a horror fan, this is a, a great new series to jump onto. Check it out. Let's wrap up the show with Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> number 28 yeah, by yeah. Zeb Wells, Ed McGinnis, Mark Farmer, Marcio Menez, and VC's Joe Caramagna. Welcome to the ultimate uh, amazing Spider-Man podcast, where we talk about every issue of Spider-Man uh, since it got cool to do so. I, I hate, I hate the fact. I love Ed McGuinness's art. I hate that he's drawing uh, Norman Osborn's hair wrong. Oh, I love That's it. That's all I see. I love, I love his like my one of my favorite panels in this entire book is. Um, uh, Norman Osborn's facial expressions. Oh, well, like he's... this, this, like uh, this one right here of like, please remove them from my facility. Like, <laughs> I love um, insipid middle management Norman Osborn. Like, yeah. please don't. Yeah, Why? yeah, yeah. No. And he's... you know what? He's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, now I um, I love this book. It's so fun. And this dumb. is this is um. It's getting dumber. And funner. I, I'm. I wouldn't. I think it's getting dimmer and fun. No, I dumber. I don't. I. I don't think it's dumb. I think it's comic booky. Joyful. Maybe that's the like. It's. It's um, joyful. That's probably the wrong word too. Um. It's not dumb. It's. It's a. Uh, it's out there. Like mm -hmm. it's not afraid of just like being playful or weird or yeah. like. I think the upgrades to. To Doc Hawk are fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I love his little octoid minions. Yeah, and then they form as a th like. That's awesome. Yeah, and they reiterate it here too with um. The hunter Craven, uh, where he's just like this little stupid thing has got a terrible attitude. He's like he's got my attitude because yeah. they're all sentient on me. Like I will never have anything that is a, uh, possible to make its own decisions. And you know what? I didn't see the uh, the betrayal happening the betrayal yes the betrayal oh the betrayal hold on i forgot the betrayal i read this a week ago it's what a betrayal. The betrayal there's a there's a twist there's a betrayal oh okay cool um which which did bother me uh it did or didn't it did it did bother me. it was i was like i was a little upset i thought that the bond that was shared uh that started this out was uh strong and oh. real but i guess not oh no 
I don't remember what you're talking about. Don't worry about. about it. I'm not going to spoil it, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, uh, I, like, I think I my this problem book. is I don't, I don't like the guarbles. Um, all the little octoids, I'm still not, like, they might grow on me, but right now, all these little octoids that guarble, 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 guarble. <laughs> I love it. They're, um, uh, they're, it's literally evil flubber with masks on. I love them. Evil flubber. Yeah. That's they're, what you said last time. And I'm they like, make, that, that makes me feel a little bit they worse make me, slash better. They make me so happy. I want... <laughs> I want, <laughs> I want a little um, Octoid toy. Yeah, they make me so fucking happy. I, like, it does. It do, it it scratches the 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 Jaro itch. It really does. Oh 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 oh! Somebody responded and told us what happened to Doc Ock in on the YouTube's. Um, but uh, shoot, I didn't. I don't have it queued up. Well, that's what we do here. We plan. We plan, um, we prepare. Because remember, I was about to comment on Ed McGuinness's look for the way he draws Doc Ock, which I think is He's delightful. Like, I want a clone body that is slower and bulbous. Um, apparently, he made a deal with, you guessed it, Mephisto. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing it up right now. It's a good idea. This is going great. Always a good idea. Uh Oh, wait, you did, I mean, I guess that's kind of full circle. His journey was kind of as a Spider-Man. He's got to, like, revert back to some sort of status quo by a deal with Mephisto. That's, is that is that borderline brilliant in, in its symmetry? Maybe, yeah. right? Who did that? That doesn't matter. You don't know. <laughs> uh, Answer my questions, JD. Damn it. I'm so sorry, whoever commented on the... I just... I'm Now I'm all flustered and I can't find it quick enough. Don't worry, buddy. All We're right, good. anyway. But yeah, it was a Mephisto John. That, you know, he had Peter's clone body, mm-hmm. and then he wound up making a deal with Mephisto to get his old body back. Was the clone body dying? Maybe. Uh, hey, you know what? I think this happened during Spencer. S- yeah, during Secret Invasion. No, 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 no. During Secret, like after Secret War Invasion, the um, Empire, Secret Empire, oh. because he was working for Hydra during Secret Empire. Right, and, the, and it the feels buff. like it happened somewhere around there, like Superior Spider-Man led into Secret Empire, and then he was working for Hydra, and then something else. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess it was the Nick Spencer run, because that had a lot to do with demons, supernatural stuff. Maybe. Yeah. I don't remember him being in his run That's until okay. after. Yeah, okay. Um. So you're, I, I am... <sighs> I'm not 100% on amazing life. right now, but you're like, you're Octoids super for life. into octoids. Yeah. Um, anyone that, this is not, I guess, it sounds like an absolute statement. It's not, but I, I fear that anyone that is not enjoying this. Run? This arc. Just no. this arc. Okay. Um, is doing so out of spite of other choices made in the run that they don't like. Because oh, this is. But I'm not that guy. No, you're not. But you, you like you don't you don't like the octoids. But just like the the idea, this this whole like kind of conceit of um, a new upgrade and the the Trojan horse and mm-hmm. Spidey being best. This, it's it just reads so old school Spider Man and kind of yeah. playful to me. And I I dig it. I dig the shit out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I still want to know what <laughs> these orbs are on Spider Man's uh, forearms. Oh, I don't care. They they seem to serve absolutely no purpose. Didn't he use them at some point? I don't know. I don't remember it. I hate them. And uh, Ed McGinnis forgot to draw them on the cover. Um, all right. Maybe they. So fresh, fresh enough, fresh as fuck. I think it's fresh. Fresh. I wouldn't say fresh as fuck. It's still just like a another issue of Spider Man. It sounds like you love it. I'm enjoying this book. Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, this is oh issue twenty eight. Yeah. This is my flashpoint. What does that mean? I have never gotten <gasps> this far in an amazing <laughs> this Spider-Man. This far in an amazing Wait, Spider-Man. You were the Nick in Spencer. real time, I read the Nick Spencer up until like issue twenty-eight because I was so fucking tired of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, understandable. Yeah, that, that, went, that like, was what, right after issues. Yeah, well, over a hundred because Ugh. he had so many point whatever Ugh. issues, uh, like point H U point. Yeah, it could. I was started off so good, man. That could have been. Maybe a run it, for the ages if editorial again, didn't. Maybe it run. Maybe it reads better in 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 trade or collected because yeah. you don't have the oppressive nature of a. There were some weeks when I had four Amazing yeah. Spider-Man books. Like knock it off, guys. Yeah, it was. Sucks. It was I too. This. Like I, I'm, I a, I'm the Spidey guy. I hated being a subscriber to Spider-Man because I had ninety percent of my stack was Spider-Man. Yeah. Every month, I'm yeah. like, I'm done. Yeah. I don't want this anymore because all of it, none of it felt like it was even progressing the plot. Yeah. 
It was just this is happening over here, and then this mm-hmm. is happening at the same time over yeah. here. Here's here's five point one issues about Robbie. Yeah. Like, uh. well, why, uh, well, uh. Also, I miss I miss um the little his little pet. Which oh Gog. Gog, I miss Gog. Whatever well, Gog was only in like the back half of the run. Well, whatever happened so to cute. Boomerang? No one fucking talks about him anymore. Well, he, was, he died. He died a hero's yeah, death. Yeah, but then. It's never mentioned. No, he like he dies shit. in panel. Yeah. No one even says like you killed Boomerang or hey, no, this Peter is for does. Peter this does. is Peter. Peter freaks out. And then the very next issue, not mentioned Co- whatsoever. Boomerang. Yeah, not mentioned whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Even even Robbie's just like not even saying anything about like hey when Their you roommate. lived with me like yeah. hey did you know our roommate was murdered yeah 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 <laughs> BT Dubs yeah <laughs> by the way yeah um, anyway so what are you can, looking forward to what am I looking forward to I I really want to read the schlub. Oh yeah, uh, I have no interest in it. No, no. You don't. You don't like the idea of a, a amazing dentist getting body swapped with a superhero. Is that what it's about? Mm. All right, now I'm interested. Yeah. Just looking at the cover and the art, I was like, I don't care about this. Oh. But that that elevator pitch. It's it's a uh, it's it's old school stupid. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am interested. I'm excited to finish Secret Invasion today. That's where I'm at because we're going to talk about it tonight right. on the Cold Pop Podcast live stream, eight o'clock on YouTube. Um, That's right, baby. We're, we're going to talk about Secret Invasion. Oh, and I got to watch the... Are we doing the second issue or episode? I'll watch the second episode. Same. But um, yeah, so I, we can talk about I, it. I don't like to give uh, Brian too much homework because he doesn't finish it. He doesn't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he will never listen to this too, so we can yeah, probably we can just, just talk, talk about all of Yeah. I keep asking him, hey, man, just watch the show after the show is done so that you can give me little time codes where I can make small videos for the YouTube shorts. He's like, okay. Not once, never once. <laughs> I I have I have not so subtly asked in the group chat like thirty times over the past week. Did everyone get a chance to read Secret Invasion? Yeah. It is eight issues long. It started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll have time. Yeah. Like no, read it. But he read it. I'm super happy. I'm so excited. I mean, I'm excited to talk about it tonight. Yeah. Uh, join us tonight, or else, or else don't. Or else. The threat. Um. All right. We will talk at you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, uh, hey, whoa, whoa, look, 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 look. We take requests. Oh, yeah, we do. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and/or some comics that are coming out that you want us to talk about on this here episode of not this, not this episode, this here show, yeah, of Fresh File Pace, um, just email us at cultpopgo at gmail dot com. Yeah, c u l t p o p g o at gmail dot com, or you can find us on social media at cultpopgo, or just either one of us. We're not yeah. hard to find, but yeah. People come into the store and they're like, "Oh yeah, great episode today, or a great episode last week." I've been listening. No one writes in. No one says anything. But That's in all. person, they exist. They exist in real life, just not on the internet. So make your make your virtual self. A physical self, Wait, and what? let us <laughs> shut up, <laughs> and and uh-huh. let us know what you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. All right. uh, it's so easy. Go on any any app or or the previews page, and you'll see all the comics that are coming out in a week in advance. Just, like, just guys, fucking hit this. us up. Like, hey, yeah. this comes out next week. I want to hear what your opinion is. Yeah. Do it. All right. all right, we love you. We'll love talk to you later. Bye. Uh-huh. And see. Thank you for listening to the Cult Pop Network, home to podcasts, live shows, and a whole lot of fun stuff for every flavor of fan. Follow us wherever you find your favorite podcast, and be sure to join us live every Wednesday night at youtube.com backslash cultpopgo at 8 p.m. Eastern. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we drop new Thunder Rounds and episodes of Fresh Floppies, a spoiler-free show about single-issue comics released each week. Until then, we'll talk at you later.